everybody. I'm here with an update. First, before I get started, I do want to say to people that are living in Texas, um, my heart is just going out to you. I know this is horrible, and I know what you're going through, unfortunately. I was in Katrina. Oh, it's been 12 years ago now, I think, and... And then about five years later, my community was hit by an F, just shy of an F5. I mean, it was like two miles shy of being an F5 tornado. And it just wreaked a path of, dis of destruction and uh, including me, um, lived in a motel for two months. That wasn't fun, but I, I just know that you're going through such a tough time and my heart just goes out to you and I just pray for you each 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 day that things will get better things will not get back to normal quickly but they will get there just be patient um, my heart just goes out to you that I guess that's the best I can say um, this week I did see my my surgeon I was very underwhelmed by the experience. I had heard that he was such a personable guy, and I don't know, he just kind of acted like a surgeon, really. Um, oh, my hair is so scussy. I'm sorry. Um, at any rate, he did answer, he and some other doctors that came in before he did, did answer some questions. I'm not sure what those other doctors were there for. They were, I, I don't know. But at any rate, um, I did find out that I will be in the hospital for two nights. Um, I will have a leak test the first thing the next morning and will not be allowed anything until I have that leak test. So I'll be taking the biotine to the hospital with me because I am quite sure I will have a bad, bad case of dry mouth. <laughs> Go figure. Um, I was really hoping I'd only have to be in the hospital one night, but I guess I'd rather be safe than sorry, so two nights it is, and leak tests it is, and uh, found out that he will repair the hiatal hernia if there is one, which will be good and I found out something really interesting that I you know I've wondered you know they say that if you have a gastric sleeve that you can either have developed GERD or it might worsen your GERD and but with a bot so they recommend that you have a bypass which is why I'm having to have a bypass um in a I couldn't figure that out. I mean, what was the difference? But I asked the surgeon, and you know, it was just one of my silly questions. I, I might, I'm just curious, really. Not that it affects, you know, what happens during the surgery or how it affects me. Well, I guess it does, <laughs> come to think of it. But at any rate, the reason that the bypass works is that all the acid producers are down close to where your duodenum is. And so when they disconnect the stomach, it no longer has access to your esophagus. And so you can have lots of acid in your stomach that you're not using anymore. But it won't give you GERD, or at least that was my understanding. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, learn something new every day. On the low note, I got really ticked off this week. I had called my bariatric office on Tuesday after the appointment because the one question I didn't think to ask was, now that you're going to submit my paperwork, which they said they were, um then how long once you submit my paperwork will you get it back and will I will I know whether I'm approved and I don't think there's going to be a problem with my being approved 
um, all the doctors have said they're, they're signing off on it. What I did find out was that when the pulmonologist sent in her, her letter to say that she cleared me for surgery, she didn't send in the sleep apnea compliance form which the anesthesiologist has to have, although why that should hold up my paperwork going into insurance, I don't know, but whatever. Um, so she hadn't sent it in, it sent that in, so I had to call the pulmono pulmonologist's office to get that sent in, and they said they were going to fax it in Friday, um, which is when I finally got hold of my bariatric office. Um, the, the, they did try calling me back that Tuesday, but where I'm at in the, our new school is where the storm shelter is, and sometimes I get absolutely no reception, and so she could have called me, and, it, and the call didn't go through, probably. Um, at any rate, so Friday when I finally got a chance to get back with them, that's, you know, it was the pulmonologist. And also the cardiologist has not sent his letter of recommendation for the surgery yet. I tried Friday to get hold of their office and, and never did. And I was really ticked off, what, you know, because they never returned my phone call. And I tried calling several times and I just kept getting some lady that was completely unintelligible and I couldn't I think she was telling me to hold but I'm not sure what you because the line would go dead and I didn't know whether I was still on the phone or had been because I even went and called from a landline you know to avoid the problem with my office and lack of cell phone reception but I did find out when I checked my phone, my landline at home, that they had called back that day. So, uh, but so now I'm going to have to try to get hold of them Monday in between having to go to a meeting in Hattiesburg. And, ugh, life is aggravating. Why can't people just do what they're supposed to do? If I didn't do what I was supposed to do, somebody would come and get me, right? But other people just don't. You know, I didn't think I was going to have to face this problem with this cardiologist because he really is a nice guy and he's very personable. And, you know, he even, he even joked, you know, when I, after the, after the heart catheterization, I said, well, now you're going to call the doctor and tell him I can have surgery, right? And he said, Honey, I'll even text them. And so, apparently he didn't text them, call them, or even send a letter. And really all I need is the letter. But at any rate, but they did say that once they got the paperwork together and sent that into insurance, that it would take two to five days. She said she has never had it take more than five days. And so then they'll set a surgery date. So maybe by maybe by a week from Monday, I'll have a surgery date. That would be so exciting. Just, you know, just being able to plan a little bit, you know, because people keep asking me, when are you having the surgery? When are you having the surgery? And I'm like, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Ah. And I hate saying I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things I don't like to do. I like to know. I am I am a big time control freak, which is why anesthesia scares me because somebody else is controlling me. And and I like to be able to plan ahead. I mean, that is the one of the the most aggravating things to me is people that don't plan ahead and then they expect me to get something done in less than 10 minutes. Drives me nuts. So I like to plan ahead and I want to be able to say, I will be out from this date to this date. I want to be able to submit my FMLA paperwork to the county office. Uh, so I'm frustrated. Yes, I am. You can't tell a bit though, can you? <laughs> but at any rate, that's really all I have. Um, 
again to the people in Texas, my heart is going out to you and you are in my prayers. Um, everyone be blessed. And I will talk to you later when I have another update. Please remember to subscribe. It, it, it's that thing below. See, I don't know where I'm pointing. I'm just pointing somewhere. Because other people actually will put it on the screen and they point right to it. And I'm like, how do they do that? But I'm not an editing genius. So my videos don't get edited. I keep saying I'm going to learn how. But. I'm just too busy right now. I'm just trying to get my job done so I can go have my insides rearranged. At any rate, have a blessed day. Bye.